Question. Where do you think the money in the United States is concentrated? New York, LA, a hole in my backyard? Well, yeah, that's where it is. But it's also here, in a tiny census tract where 13.2% of people are millionaires, meaning basically one out of every seven and a half people have a million dollars worth of investable assets. My best guess, it's the half guy. And this isn't some tax loophole that has Richie Riches parking their cash somewhere they never go. No, this place doesn't owe its wealth to loopholes. It owes it to nukes. Because this place is Los Alamos, New Mexico, the town the US military built during World War II to secretly develop the nuclear bomb. So if you know Los Alamos, it's probably from that, though eagle-eyed HI stands will recognize it from the time they re-engineered Fogbank and made one of history's least useful graphics. Los Alamos wasn't the only so-called instant city that sprung up in a discreet location to help build the first nuclear weapons, but it's done a uniquely good job at taking what started as a mission of stealth and turning it into decades of wealth. Compare median income Los Alamos to another instant city, Oak Ridge, and you'll see it's almost double. So it's not like all communities formed around the bomb were all destined for Los Alamos relative prosperity. After all, we can't all be ranked number one healthiest community in the country, and shout out to them for landing that title even with all that nuclear waste on their hands. So what happened here? Well, when World War II ended, the military wasn't entirely sure what to do with Los Alamos. Allegedly, J. Robert Oberheimer suggested returning the land to the indigenous people who'd lived there for generations, but the powers that be didn't take that suggestion as seriously as said people might have liked. For a time, they just kept the lab open without knowing what it was going to be for, then they decided to devote it to making bigger, batter bombs. Not that we'd ever use something like that, just because it would be nice to have. Or because it would be, um, fun? You won't be surprised to know that build something we'll never use, but if we do use it, it'll be the worst thing that's ever happened was not a super inspiring mission, and both morale and retention became big problems at Los Alamos. Also, in February 1946, all the pipes froze and they had to truck water in, which was the last straw for some people. In 1954, Truman signed the Atomic Energy Act, which made building nuclear weapons a civilian project instead of a military one, and by 1957, the security gates were gone and Los Alamos was officially a normal town. Well, a normal town with a huge nuclear physics laboratory in it, still in the remote spot they'd picked when the primary objective was sneakitude. During the Cold War, they did develop those bigger, batter bombs, i.e. thermonuclear weapons, and afterwards, they started doing a ton of other stuff, from looking after the country's nuclear stockpile, to researching biofuels, to national security, to figuring out what fog bank was, and more. Which is to say, Los Alamos, the lab and the town built to accommodate it, is still kicking, meaning it still needs to convince highly educated, skilled workers to set up their lives at the intersection of nowhere and sand. And without the promise of star-spangled war crimes, they just have to lure these expensive nerds in with a high quality of life. Unlike my expensive nerds, who I lure with gumdrops. Decades of high-paying research jobs and government funding have turned Los Alamos into an outlier in New Mexico, one of the poorest states in the country. While 18.4% of New Mexico residents live in poverty, according to the census, only 4.7% of those living in Los Alamos do. While 28.5% of New Mexico residents over the age of 25 have bachelor's degrees or higher, in Los Alamos, 69% do. In fact, almost 18% of the over 25s in Los Alamos have PhDs. Here's how staggering that number is. This website shows you the percentage of people in each county that have PhDs, with the darker colors being a higher concentration. The cutoff to have the darkest color on here is somewhere around 2.5 or 3%. Los Alamos has 17.7. .7. That's the highest in the country. So if you have a heart attack in Los Alamos, you're in luck, because there's almost definitely a doctor around. While Los Alamos did invent H-bombs, they didn't invent being an expensive little town. But what's unique about Los Alamos is that you can find almost none of that wealth in any of the areas that surround it. Like, compare Los Alamos County to Rio Arriba, one county north. It's night and day. Los Alamos is substantially richer, earning eight times as much money despite having a population half the size. It's also got more access to broadband, more people with health insurance, it's wider, its rents are higher, they've got two Starbucks to Rio Arriba's one, despite the difference in landmass. The income gap between Los Alamos and Rio Arriba is, in fact, one of the largest between contiguous counties, which is one of those stats that really make you think, wow, people really do come up with a lot of stats. But if you want to see the difference between Los Alamos and its next door neighbors, the stats only tell part of the story. If you want to get the feeling, head to the Los Alamos and Rio Arriba websites. On one, you read about everything from a high altitude golf course to a science museum to a spy tour. On the other, there's a job board and a link to an auction for a surplus 2008 Ford Taurus, which I would have bid on if I hadn't just spent all my money bidding on a lighthouse four videos ago. If that's how clear the difference between these communities is online, just imagine what it's like on the ground. Over the years, there have been efforts to get more of that juicy Los Alamos cash flowing to their neighbors, places that aren't just poor, but are also home to plenty of workers who commute in to work in Los Alamos, at the lab or elsewhere. But no agreement to that end has stuck around long enough to change Los Alamos' status as an island of wealth in a sea of, well, 
sand, mostly sand. And so we get our little map quirk, a place in the middle of nowhere where over 13% of people are millionaires, and not that it matters, but it came up in our research and I had to tell you, where at least one bar sells an IPA called Hoppenheim. Now, if you were to go to that bar, there's a 1 in 3 chance that one of the people you sit next to has a PhD, and if you want to be able to pick up some juicy nuggets about what sort of maniacal things they're up to in the lab, then boy do I have the service for you. It's called Brilliant, and it's the best way to get a working understanding of some of the most daunting STEM subjects. Among their thousands of lessons, they offer five on advanced physics, each of which is beautifully designed, breaking down the massive subjects into small, bite-sized chunks. They use interactive challenges and straightforward explanations to teach small, intuitive principles, then bring them together into larger concepts, and with enough of that, you suddenly start to understand gravitational physics or classical mechanics or something else that that Hoppenheimer drinking PhD might talk about. I think it's so cool that you can fill those small open moments when you might normally scroll Twitter or TikTok with brilliant, and that, with that small change, you'll eventually be able to understand concepts that most people never will. And that's why Brilliant's been one of our longest term sponsors. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.